Everyone can, can sit down or, or kneel or whatever you fancy. We're very informal in Ring's End. Um, Father, Dad said, Father Dan says the Irish sisters are renowned for their sense of humour. So I'll start by saying, will all you young people please check that your phones are off or on silent. Thank you. Um, it's a special day to welcome you all here. Launch, uh, the Master launch your year of celebration. 200 years of the Religious Sisters of Charity, or as they're known colloquially, the Irish Sisters. I'd like to start by welcoming to the parish of St. Patrick in Ring's End, uh, your Superior General, and the many sisters, and the sisters from all over the place here tonight. And we also have a, a number of clergy here. You've got uh, John McDonough, or John Gonta, that's John, John, who's Sandy Mount, parish priest of Sandy Mount. Fergal, uh, let's say my ex curate, uh, Dan O'Connor, who's uh, there, known as the unofficial chaplain to the nuns of Ireland, and he's a, he's a monsignor as well. And Des, Des, who uh, has learnt uh, to his cost that it is uh, uh, Mary Aikenhead's uh, feast, not Nano Nagel. So good stuff, Des. Now, when we get older, we, we we get a little bit scattered. Anyway, I'd like to call up now Sister Mary Christian to welcome the various communities through our video link which is on that pillar over there the various communities of your, your own communities throughout the world that are listening and uh, connecting with us this evening there you are, Mary. good evening everybody and Welcome to the launch of the bicentenary year of the Religious Sisters of Charity. We are very grateful to the people of Ringsend and to Father Ivan Tonge for facilitating this liturgy and to Father Ivan for agreeing to be our celebrant. I would like to welcome all those who are joining us either here present or through the webcam. We welcome also our con-celebrants, Father John McDonough, Father Fargo McDonough, Father Des Dooley and Father Dan O'Connor. There's a special welcome today for the people joining us on webcam, particularly the parishioners of Ring's End. Many of our sisters are also joining us throughout the world for this special occasion. It's now 5 a.m. on the 20th of January in Australia. Welcome to the members of our sister congregation who are watching. In Zambia and Malawi, it's 9 p.m. Welcome to all in Zambia. Unfortunately, the sisters in Malawi are marooned because of very rainy weather, and they've been without electricity for the past two weeks. So our thoughts are with them this evening, even though they cannot join in. Nigeria, England, Scotland and Ireland share the time zone with us. So welcome all. Finally, in California, it's 11 a.m. Good morning to all in California. On the 1st of September, 1815, Mary Aikenhead made her first profession, and this marked the birth of the Congregation of the Religious Sisters of Charity. We have chosen today, the 19th of January, Mary Aikenhead's birthday, to launch our celebration for the bicentenary year. Throughout this year, each area will have celebrations at a time which will suit their ministries. We have chosen Ringsend because it is a place that was very dear to the heart of Mary Aikenhead. In 1832, cholera was rampant in Dublin, but by 1833 it had begun to subside and all but disappear in the city. 
However, in the summer of 1833, it came back with increased virulence to the villages of Rings End and Irish Town. And Mary Aikenhead writes, We found some in the agonies of death without the means even of procuring a drink. Many perish without medical aid. So she decided she would do something about it and she wrote to all the people she could think of around who might be able to help. And in a letter to Mary Aikenhead, from Mary Aikenhead to Mary de Chantal on the 7th of August, 1833, we read, We are in the midst of cholera. In Irish town and Rings End, it is much worse than last year. By the aid of Sister Francis Teresa's brother, a man by the name of Moore O'Farrell, an MP, we got £20 from the Lord Lieutenant. I sent her and another to the fine house of the landlord's agent, and we have obtained a store in Ring's End. With God's blessing, we open our poor hospital this evening. Writing somewhat later, she adds, Sisters Mary Jerome and Frances Teresa spend all their time in the poor little cholera hospital. That was in 1833. If Mary Aikenhead were to come back today, she would be greatly pleased to see your fine medical centre, your schools, the new guard station across the road, the library, everything that helps to serve the people of an area. Tonight, we give thanks for Mary Aikenhead and what she declared was the sole and single purpose of the congregation to be ever ready to lend our humble assistance in those works of mercy which may tend to alleviate the sufferings of our fellow creatures of every creed. Thanks very much, Sister Mary Christian, for that introduction, and welcome to the congregation worldwide. Uh, we gather now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus be with us this day of our lives. We begin Mass asking for forgiveness and healing as we say. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great peace in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. For through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the way the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Gloria, Gloria.
much for that enthusiastic rendering. And we come to our, our college, our prayers, our intentions. At our Mass here, we always remember those around our parish altar list of the dead, but of course today we remember the sisters of the congregation who've laboured in our community, Brings End, Irish Town and Sandy Mount down. We ask the Lord to watch over and care for them. We remember always at Mass here those who were ill in the community. It was a very uh, much a concern, Mary Aiken Heads, as we know. So we remember those who were in hospital, at home or in a home at the moment, them and their carers. We gather our intentions for each other together this evening as we say. Pour out on us, O Lord, we pray, a spirit of truth, understanding and peace, that we may know with all our hearts what is pleasing to you, and with one accord pursue what we have come to know through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Now, Teresa is reading our first, is our first reading today. Teresa, you're on. St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The word of the Lord.
Our second readings are going to be done by Angela, Philomena and Dermot this evening. Our second reading has been chosen from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, and from the early writings about Mary Aikenhead to give us some understanding of what motivated her to found this religious congregation. St. Paul writes, We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind and doctrine. But, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together, by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part, working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. We have looked through many of the early writings about Mary Aikenhead and have found two accounts that give us some idea of how Mary Aikenhead firstly took the message of St. Paul to heart and secondly how she appeared to other people. The first is from the writings of Reverend Dr. Russell, a Dominican priest who knew her from the time of her foundation in Cork until her death. He says, She was a woman to be revered and loved, gifted with high spiritual knowledge and proficiency, sometimes brusque perhaps in manner, but making you understand that honesty was the great point with her. Looking like what she was, foundress of the Great Institute, she reminded me of St. Teresa or of St. Catherine of Siena with a dash of the Celtic nature. The second account is from the book The Life and Work of Mary Aikenhead. In this book, a sister of charity, Mother Mary Ignatius Sweetman, who entered the congregation in 1835, recalls her first meeting with Mary Aikenhead. One of my earliest recollections is having been brought when a child of about five years of age to visit a relative who was a nun in one of the convents of the Sisters of Charity. Mother Aikenhead came to the parlor. She was an elegant-looking woman, tall and slight, with dark gray eyes, almost black, and an aquiline nose. Her bearing was majestic, but there was a great benignity in her countenance, and her smile was very sweet. Her manners were simple and playful, which gave her an attraction for children and won their confidence. I at once got into chat with her, and her manner and words were never forgotten by me. Speak, O Lord, your servant here is listening. You have the 
message of eternal life. Speak, O oh Lord, your servant here is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alle, allelu, alleluia. I'd invite Father John McDonough, parish priest of Sandy Mount, uh, to read our gospel this evening. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, he said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks very much, John. Um, just two extra bits. Uh, Father Tom MacDonald, the Holy Ghost priest, or as spiritualist as they now call themselves, uh, who was chaplain to St. Michael's Hospital, was due to celebrate with us this evening, but he, he was taken a bit ill, so he sends his excuses. He has a sister in the uh, Irish sisters, Josephine, I think some of you know her. Uh, the second point is that uh, Des over there Shares uh, Mary Haken heads uh, birth date, so happy birthday, Des, tonight. <laughs> now, when I was told to preach tonight, uh, I was going to say ask, be more polite, but told actually sums up what, what happened. I did recommend that maybe one of the sisters would be more expert on talking about Mother Mary Haken heads work. But anyway, my recommendation was turned down, so you're stuff with me this evening. Uh, one of the ways I, when I chair meetings, um, I skip reading the, the minutes at the start of the meeting and work on the presumption that everyone's read them, which is usually wrong, of course. So this evening, I'm taking it for granted that you're all knowledgeable on the subject of your foundress or founder, whichever title you prefer, 
and I'll, I'll head on from there. Firstly, this evening, we're here not to celebrate the past. We're here to remember the past and we're here to celebrate the present. The present work of the Irish Sisters continues, of course, in these parishes of Ringsend and Sandymount to the present day. Uh, three parishes I've been in, uh, three of the parishes I've been in, James Street, which of course the Convent of Mount Shannon, Basin Lane, were, uh, is in. North Wall, Lawrence of Tools, where Lawrence's place, Seva Place, there's our sisters work there, and of course in Ring's End here. All of whom, all those three parishes that I've worked in, are associated with the Irish sisters from the earliest days to the present. And I'd like to make a personal comment uh, on the great support and partnership I experienced with the uh, three sisters' communities in those parishes. This is, as Sister Mary said, the start, the commencement of the years, of, of the 200 years. Uh, but here tonight in St. Patrick's Parish in Ring's End, our celebrations are really a, a local celebration, not the All-Ireland or the, the Dublin one. Those uh, events are still to come, and they'll be the one the, the dignitaries uh, uh, come to grace. I know we have a dignitary here tonight in the form of Father Dan, but Monsignor Dan, but the rest of us are fairly ordinary human beings. Anyway, tonight is about the connection between Rings End, Irish Town, Sandy Mount, and the Irish Sisters. And we're, we talk about uh, Mary Aikenhead's inspiration. I was talking to a famous historian this, uh, this evening, and he said, uh, you've got to remember that she had Scots blood and uh, cork determination, so there was no way she could fail. Anyway, her inspiration worked out and still works out in practice in this community here. Tonight we remember the beginnings, the beginnings of Mary Mary Aikenhead and her sister's connection with our communities are well documented, Sister Mary said that. As a result of her and the sisters visiting the homes and seeing the dire poverty and the needs of the local people at first hand, she bought a store. It cost a, locally, she cost a sum of £50 sterling. That's old money, and a banker told me this evening, in real terms of uh, buying something like that nowadays, it would be half a million. So you can imagine she certainly had to work to get the money together. Donations turned the store into a hospital, 12 beds, in 1833, as I say, well documented, at the time of a very virulent cholera uh, epidemic locally. She was aware of the lack of any medical provision in the area. And her, in fact, her inspiration, and I said that to the, our locals here during the week, her inspiration eventually led to the building of St. Vincent's Hospital, which is our local hospital even today. She laid out that this work and that of education, looking after orphans, the unemployed, local fishermen, sailors, that this was the work of the order. The, work, the orders work from the very, very beginning and continues. Work to be done, above all, we learn with kindness. She was very uh, strong about that. There was to be a kindness about the interaction between those in need and herself and her colleagues. She was well aware, and if you've done your reading, you're well, she was well, you know, she was well aware about the evils of unemployment, low wages, high rents in her day. In this area, the local, the uh, poor had even got to buy water to drink. She understood how these problems led to starvation and sickness, and she was constantly appealing uh, for help for these communities. Well, tonight we come together to celebrate the continuation of that work of the Irish sisters under the inspiration of your founders. Now, she won't thank me for it, but our locals uh, here expect me to stress but in this parish, the early sisters are well known through the gentle progress of our, your and our local sister, Sister Maria, known to all and much appreciated. Tonight we pray together. The work which makes and has made such a difference to the people of our communities down through those 200 years may continue for many decades to come. On behalf of our parishioners, John, uh, John and I, my parishioners, 
I thank you when I ask the Lord and his blessed mother to continue to bless your endeavours in our communities. Thanks very much, folks. Now, at this stage, the prayers of the faithful, and I haven't got the num- names of those who, are, those who are reading the prayers of the faithful. Might come up to me, please. We pray for Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and religious, that they may work for truthfulness, justice, and peace, and that together we may be a sign of hope and great reconciliation to all. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be here. As we begin the week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray that we may recognize and respect the differences in other churches and faiths, and the values that are present in each person. We pray for the gift of unity among all God's people. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, gracious be here. Today, with great joy, we praise and thank God for our foundress, Mary Aikenhead, as we celebrate the bicentenary of the foundation of our congregation, the Religious Sisters of Charity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank God for the many sisters who ministered in Rings End Parish at the beginning of the congregation and for all those throughout the past 200 years who have continued to serve with love and compassion both here and throughout the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we celebrate the year of consecrated life, we thank God for all who have answered his call and continue to bring the joy of the gospel to all they come in contact with. May they continue to show joy in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be here. We pray that young people may give time to deepen their relationship with God and hear the call, come and see. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be here. Give rest and peace to all who have died, especially the sisters and benefactors of the congregation, our family members and friends. May they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be you. Now we're going to have the gifts brought up and the Cadwell School of Irish Dancing are going to atmospheric, atmospheric, make atmospheric uh, dance liturgical dance uh, up the aisle. Great surface to make a bit of sound off too.
Certainly they'll enjoy that on the video link all over the world. We make our offering now, not alone the just the bread and wine, they're symbols of the, the two hundred years of making a difference, making a difference that continues to our time and with our prayers and the hopes of it'll continue for many decades in the future as we pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. We pray together this evening, we pray in hope and faith that the offering we make the thanksgiving we offer may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favour, Lord, we pray on the offerings we make tonight, that, they, that we may truly understand and proclaim with confidence what is right and wholesome in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. With the angels and saints, we sing probably. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And he said, 
Do this in memory of me. In song we proclaim our faith. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Dermot, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy and religious. Now, for a moment, each of us remembers the many sisters who have gone to the Lord. Uh, I remember two in particular that from, from James Street Times, Leila and Berkman's were very supportive of me and my colleagues in James Street. But each of you has quite a number of people who remember to whom you owe the debt of memory and love. We remember them uh, tonight. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we also may inherit eternal life and praise and glorify you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Join together now with a prayer used by our parents, probably our relations, to welcome each of us into this world. The prayer you said, as you were professed, the prayer we say to say goodbye to those who matter so much to us, who give us so much of their lives. Today, as a community, in thanksgiving for the lives of those who've gone before us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And we ask for the Lord's peace for ourselves, our families, and for the many communities you've come from to be here tonight, as we say. Lord Jesus Christ, you said you're above. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and on the faith of your church. Grace to you. The Lord's peace be with us tonight. I ask you to share with each other now the sign of the Lord's peace and forgiveness.
Yes. Mr. Uranomia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, our faith in him draws us together tonight. Happy are those called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to
Now we're almost there, folks. And four of our confirmation girls are going to work with the folk group now in a second on a little liturgical dance here. That's uh, Maya, Katie, Abby and Sophie there. And Patrick, Patrick Lynch, you see his photography in over there. Uh, he uh, does a lot of these uh, sessions for us. Very good photographer. Uh, name and address applied for uh, those who've got money to spare. <laughs> also does loads of lectures on local history, particularly First World War. Now, girls, are you ready? Action station, almost, I think. Is everybody back here? Get into place, positions. Fantastic. Uh, Sophie, Abby, Katie and Maya, thanks very much, girls. Excellent. Very good indeed. Now, uh, you always uh, know who gets the last word. So Sister Anne, I think, is on getting the last word here this evening.
On behalf of the organising committee, it is my pleasure to extend our thanks to Father Ivan Tonge and to his concelebrants, Monsignor Dan O'Connell, O'Connor, Father John McDonough, Father Fergal McDonough and Father Des Dooley for celebrating the Eucharist with us. It is indeed a fitting launch of our 200th anniversary and bringing blessings on all of us. Our special thanks too goes to the parishioners of St. Patrick's Parish and our local religious neighbours, the principals of the schools and college in Ringsend and Sandy Mount, the Friends of Mary Aikenhead, and all the people who help and support the work of the congregation. We also express our thanks to the musicians and choirs and readers who have contributed so much in a most beautiful way to the dignity of the celebration and to the proclamation of the word. Our special thanks go to the Caldwell School of Irish Dancing who brought a Celtic spirit into the celebration and of course, as you have just seen, our Rings End Parish Confirmation Class who prayed that lovely liturgical dance. And as you can see, the floral decor here in the front and the centrepiece are very beautiful and were arranged by Patsy Doolan. Liz Gannon, our sacristan here in the church, helped in so many ways. Thanks very much to both of you. We also extend our thanks to our photographer, Patrick Lynch, and to Fionn O'Tiernig, who is our trumpeter. You haven't heard him yet, I don't think, really. So, but you will be hearing him. At the end, yes. And then also we really want to say a special thank you to the staff of Ringsend and Irish Town Community Centre who have prepared some refreshments from us and we thank you most sincerely. I have no doubt that Mary Aikenhead is smiling on each one of them as they have prepared such celebration for us in food because she always said that we were to have good food. This was one of her wishes for the sisters so that they would be able to serve in the communities. Finally, I thank the sisters around the world who stayed up late to watch the Mass on webcam, especially Zambia, Nigeria and Malawi. But as we all know, Malawi is not able to be with us on webcam, but we're with them in spirit. And also our sisters in Los Angeles who will be having their lunch right now and as Sister Mary mentioned, the sisters in Australia who will be having tomorrow morning's breakfast. <laughs> it's a sort of funny, isn't it? Really, it's a small world. So we're not forgetting our sisters in Ireland, England and Scotland who are not with us tonight. Thanks to each one of you. And now it's time that we go to the community centre. And as you leave the church, don't forget to collect a little gift that's there for you. And then on going out of the church, if you turn left and follow the road up to the centre, where we will continue the celebration of our foundation of 200 years of the Sisters of Charity. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Anne. And just to repeat, out the door and down to the left. Uh, stop just before the river would help. Now... Uh, Dan, of course, is going to come and help me in the parish from time to time, but this evening, uh, as he's our, our most highly qualified uh, clergyman here, he gets to give the blessing. I, b I believe that Des began the celebration this morning by talking about Nano Nagel, the foundress. <clears throat> Well, he wasn't that far out. She was a Cork woman. Mary Aikenhead was a Cork woman. And I was born in Cork City and lived in Cork. So as we pray tonight, we ask the Lord's blessing. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of Mary Aikenhead, may those who follow her way of life be strengthened in the service of the people of God in Ireland and throughout the world. Amen. Through the prayers of Mary Aikenhead, may you who follow her way 
be blessed in your communities, may be strengthened in your service, and may enjoy the peace of the Lord. Amen. To all of us who are blessed by the service of the Sisters of Charity in so many ways throughout the world, may the Lord give us true peace, and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon us and remain with us forever. The Mass is ended. Glorify the Lord by your life. Christ urges us to serve the poor, the blessed of the Lord, and welcome through our open door the blessed of the Lord. In loving the people the world would ignore, we glorify the Lord by our love. serve to heal and bless as servants of the Lord. Our knees shall bow, our tongues confess as servants of the Lord. When we meet God's will for the world with our yes, we glorify the Lord by our love. And the earth declare the goodness of the Lord, and we encounter everywhere the goodness of the Lord. As we touch creation with healing and care, we glorify the Daily labor, skills, and us give glory to the Lord. Our hands and feet, our minds and thoughts give glory to the Lord. With wisdom and passion, the Spirit imparts, we glorify the Lord. Go in peace in Jesus' name to love and serve the Lord. Anointed by the Spirit's grace to love and serve the Lord. If we live the gospel, we seek to proclaim, we love.